MJF did it again with a promo. Real interesting. You look back at AEW Dynamite this week, and to me, top segment of the week by a mile is a promo segment, a storytelling segment, a segment that had no physical contact whatsoever. But without even having the AEW champion John Moxley in the ring, added 25 layers to the match that MJF and Moxley will have coming up at the next AEW pay-per-view. MJF and William Regal are in the ring together, and it was kind of perfect. MJF gets in there, and he's getting booed, and William Regal is getting cheered. And MJF says it's time to tell a story. And this promo is, I would say, in contention with the uh, promo that he told uh, leading up to the story that he told, really, leading up to the first CM Punk match or the dog collar CM Punk match uh, that he had where he talked about the anti-Semitism that he was the victim of growing up. MJF talked about getting extra work for WWE, and I'm assuming that he's talking about the Barclays Center. That would have to be the same extra work where the meme has gone all over the place of Samoa Joe shoving MJF dressed up as a security guard. He brought up Brian Myers and Pat Buck as his trainers, a little great detailing because then you know this is real life, uh, training at Create a Pro, and he goes, I, I went and uh, not only was it extra work, but we all had tryout matches. And he says that he had a tryout match in front of uh, uh, Adam Pierce and Dean Malenko and William Regal and Arn Anderson. And they have their tryout match, whatever. And uh, MJF uh, is brought backstage by Regal. And they sit down in a room and Regal says, sell me on yourself right now. And MJF says he cuts a promo and he pulled it off. He did it. He nailed it. Boom. Regal says, that's great. You're you're good to go. How old are you? MJF says, I am 19 years old. Regal says, too young. Not going to happen, but keep me updated with your progress. MJF says, well, that's a bummer, but I will. He says every month he's sending him a match and a promo. Match and a promo. First month, this is great. Looking forward to the next one. Second month, good stuff. Looking forward to the next one. Third month was, Max, I'm a busy guy. I look at a lot of stuff. What about this footage that you sent me makes you think that I would hire you? And that's a rhetorical question, meaning don't bother responding to this email. And MJF says, I didn't just want to quit wrestling. I wanted to kill myself when I got that email, which is deep, cuts deep. And what MJF is doing is he's telling this story of being 19 years old and really good and clearly being the type of person whose potential could be realized because we've all witnessed it be realized now. But he's also telling this extremely relatable story of being 19 years old and wanting something so bad and working and working and working. And all you need is some positive reinforcement. All you need is somebody in your corner. And this guy that you thought was in your corner tells you to go F yourself. And it's just all of your hopes and dreams come crashing down. And anybody that's had a, a dream in their life can relate to that experience. We've all been there. No matter how much success MJF has today, that thing that happened to him, that's the thing that we can all relate to. We can't relate to the Burberry scarves. We can't relate to the electric cars and the, and the, and the, and the Rolexes, the Louboutin red bottom shoes. We can't relate to any of that. We can't relate to being better than everybody else, but what we can relate to is wanting something so bad and working so hard at it and realizing that nobody's in your corner and the person that you thought was in your corner is not there. And MJF told the story so well that when Regal went to respond, it was like WrestleMania 13, the crowd had switched. Regal became Brett and MJF, the Jewish rattlesnake, was Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I've been saying this for a long time. People go like this, who is MJF? I got a, a DM from somebody who was asking about MJF in, in, a, in a professional sense. How do we describe him? Like who, a lot of people are described, uh, he's like The Rock. He's like, I go, MJF is Austin. Because when you make these comparisons, he's not supposed to sound like him. He's not supposed to be a carbon copy. He's supposed to catch that vibe. And what that vibe is, is somebody that you connect with in a very real way. That's what Austin did. That's what MJF is doing. And that's what he did in this promo. And, and, and Regal comes back 
and he he talks about how hard it was for him to come up and see that and i think it was deliberate that is what we don't want to hear regal talking about you know you can't hit people anymore so you got to make them tough and i saw potential in you and it was tough love and that tough love bs is what we've all heard the old guard everywhere in wrestling in entertainment probably in whatever job that you have the old guard is, well, I had to deal with it, so now you have to deal with it. And the new guard is, why? Why are we continuing this cycle of trauma? Why are we continuing to treat people badly as if it builds character? It doesn't build character. It makes you feel better about the position that you're in. Hurt people hurt, and that's what you're doing. And that's the story that MJF and Regal were telling. Regal was saying, bro, what I had to deal with compared to me sending you an email? Come on. And MJF is like, Regal, the fact that you had to deal with stuff should make you even more sensitive to this. It's not about what you had to deal with. It's about the fact that you had the opportunity to bring out the best in me and instead... You used your power and you crushed it. And now you're telling me you did that. You didn't do that to build character. That's nonsense. And that's the story you're getting with MJF. If you don't think that they're turning MJF babyface, I don't know what you're watching. And I said that they were turning MJF babyface during his stuff with CM Punk. And I am 100% convinced myself that that's where this was going had CM Punk not decided to blow up the business in a press conference. Now, how do we get to where we were going? How do we get to this place where MJF is that baby face and this is it? I think what really drove that home was Regal saying, you wanna be a villain? And he turned his back to him. And MJF put that ring on. And MJF two years ago would have clobbered William Regal in the back of his skull. It was the same MJF that wanted to shake Wheeler Utah's hand after his match with Wheeler. But it was stopped by Stokely and the gang. This is where it's like, oh, there's this, this human side. It started to be sprinkled on during the CM Punk rivalry when MJF was talking about being bullied as a kid. A, a villain doesn't talk about being bullied as a kid unless he's ready to turn. Wheeler was step two. This is step three. It's a multi-step process, but it's brilliant and it's happening right before our eyes. 